was supposed to uh, to do a concert for the Bastille Day, and um, the French government decided to uh, uh, do the World Head of State Summit for Bastille Day, and to ch and they changed their mind instead of doing uh, or having a concert, they have a more political event. So uh, I'm planning to do a concert uh, uh, during 89 outside uh, Paris. It will be in the center of France and it's linked to a... Uh, uh, it's quite uh, unusual event because it's linked to... We have a quite famous uh, area in France uh, called Les Maguettes and uh, this area is um, about to be uh, destroyed this year for um, to be transformed into a new area, a new, new city. And the idea is to use the implosions and uh, the uh, transformation of the city live during the concert. A kind of uh, explosive way of uh, celebrating our revolution. Uh, I mean, each of these projects are specific. I mean, I'm, as you probably know, I'm not doing uh, regular rock tours. But um, uh, so each concert or each event is more like, uh, I would say, a film project. So I'm working most of the time, a year, on a year or a year and a half, on one specific project. And the concert is not the concert itself, it's also the whole. Uh, building of the event, the production of the event itself that we are shooting and uh, we are doing a film and a book about uh, each project. So each project is uh, something, I was going to say, more than a, a concert. In a way it's more than a concert because it's uh, uh, on a production point of view, on a musical artistic point of view, it's, it's like uh, choosing, like producing a film actually. It's, choosing the right script, the right location, the right actors, and then doing the project. The revolution song, was it something, um, an image of, the, of what's happening in the world, or something almost different? Uh, the, con the concept uh, behind uh, the LP revolutions was linked, not on, only linked to uh, the celebration of the French Revolution, is the reason of the S at the end of the world, actually. Uh, because I, I think that these days, in Europe or even more around the world, I mean, the uh, story of the French Revolution is not particularly modern, or uh, it's not the current idea, maybe, of what revolution means these days. I mean, what we, we are all, I would say uh, consequences or uh, I would say products of a lot of various revolutions. The industrial revolution, the 60s and now the, if uh, you are asking uh, to people in streets what revolution means these days, they would say uh, probably they would think about uh, Islam, the Islamic world uh, in protest and on the other side also maybe the Japan and, and high tech revolution. So what I tried to uh, illustrate in this LP is, I mean, that we are uh, uh, made of all these different layers of uh, influences and I mixed, for instance, in this LP, the, 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 the sound of Hank Marvin from The Shadows and, and some with the chant, computer vocals mixed with uh, uh, Japanese jazz players. I mean, a mixture of the, I would say, the uh, culture of our days, actually. You have problems in London. Have you had the same problems in Paris with the licensing? No, actually, each time, I mean, when you, these days, when you want to escape, when you are not, or when you want to escape from the routine, or when you are not part of a format, the routine of the world tour, for instance, with a very organized uh, machinery around you. Uh, each time you have different problems. I mean, in China it was very difficult because uh, it was 
really the first time that China was really opening itself to other artists than Chinese artists. And in Houston it was linked to the celebration of the 25th anniversary of NASA. And uh, we had a, a project of working with NASA. And even this, this project uh, uh, worked during three months. And we, one, one of the ideas was to uh, uh, organize a link up between the, the shuttle and, uh, and uh, Houston. And having the astronaut Ron McNair playing saxophone in space. And uh, everything was ready. And Ron uh, gave me a call one morning before the liftoff and saying, OK, we, s we see each other in, in a week time. And it was Challenger. And uh, when I was uh, finishing the recording of the LP, we all saw live what happened to Challenger. So that was, for instance, another big problem, a tragedy. Even. I even thought to cancel the concert. And uh, the astronauts then called and said, no, you have to, you don't give up because you have to, to do it also for ourselves. For the next project, the, uh, I really would like to involve uh, even lots more the architecture and the environment of the location, even more than in Houston or in the Docklands. I've always been very interested by linking music or concert into a kind of virgin area and uh, trying to get, uh, to get other dimensions on the visual point of view that the architecture or the environment can give you or give me. What makes you want to do these enormous concerts? What's your motivation? Actually, uh, to, uh, when you are uh, not uh, singing artist, you have uh, to visualize your music in a different way, what is not necessarily a handicap, but an advantage, I think, because so many people are uh, in this business, uh, I would say, really into one format, the format of uh, uh, rock songs. What means that uh, you have to follow a certain kind of uh, way. Uh, when you are not entirely part of that, you can do a lot of uh, other things. I think non-instrumental music or non-singing music is... I'm always uh, astonished that so few artists are following this uh, way. Because I think it's a, it's a way that you can, uh, you can explore, I mean it's still, you have still so many things to explore in this way. Because at the, then you can link this to, uh, to video, to films, to a uh, uh, lot of visual, other visual techniques or other visual medium in a, in a way more, uh, in a totally different way than being linked by uh, the lyrics 